we were just talking about this earlier. There's that um, institutionalized medicine that that we learned, and thank goodness because we had a chance to learn some dang medicine. And and then there's stuff that you refine in time to experience. And I, I've got a buddy in Taiwan who uh, his thing is tea. He's like totally into tea. You know, his idea of a fun weekend was cruising through and finding small farmers in different microclimes that are taking their tea out out of the, I'm going to call it the production cycle. And instead they're like cultivating their tea to be like what it's capable of being. Small batch, excellent teas is what these folks are producing. His idea of fun was cruising around on his motorcycle and hanging out with these folks. Now he's got a business that, uh, that he does with that. And yeah, there, for sure there is something about people who are attending just like a practitioner, right? Or, or, you know, you as a businessman attending to the thing because you've got a sense of quality and you want it to be the best it can. Yeah, I mean, and I thought I was like, I was such a know-it-all. I was like, I'd found certain, a lot of suppliers who I'd ask them questions and they'd be like, don't worry, silly Westerner, you know, it's the best. And I'd be like, not a good enough answer. And then, and then I'd find, um, and then it's funny, I was I, I was talking to the person then when they weren't working it like someone I found someone in China who was like helping me and then later they became a a supplier working within a company of someone who also recognized that these tonic herbs was a part of the tradition that was being lost and they wanted to do they wanted to be in that business and especially within a, a, a you know, like they wanted to support that keeping these villages within an ind- keeping this industry basically decentralized as well in, in terms of like having independent mm-hmm. farmers. And so it was a real funny co- incidence and coincidence that I was talking to this guy and then ended up working with him later. But in, and in those beginning stages, and I was like, cool, I'm going to make sure I educate <laughs> like the, these suppliers because I had had such an experience of having to do that. And then found one person who was just like, oh, mate, you, ha- you know nothing about about this you know nothing about extraction um what's the extraction the how um how ho um uh how ho i believe i can I'll, I'll send you the the um the chinese um the man the mandarin for it you can put in your show notes in case anyone wants to look into it but just the he's like you know when you extract as soon as you think about a, a beta glucan and you, as soon as you think about and and like an in yes it's good to test a wheat you know the chinese you know the um, there's, um, the pharmac, the, what is it? The pharmacopoeia, the Chinese pharmacopoeia says in order to be, you know, get this tick, you need to test to have at least, at least 20% beta glucan and at least 10%, whatever. Saying. So look, st- standards are helpful. Dude, love it. And I, and I absolutely love it. But in terms of the way it's extracted, it was just like, as soon as you think about the ginseng aside or, you know, the astragalocides or, you know, you, you, you're straight out of the mindset that you need to be in order to get the, the most out of that mark and get them, you know, ensure that the menstruum that you're extracting in has absolutely every last little bit. And it's like, even they were saying, like, do you think the Taoists were up there in the mountains extracting just randomly, crossing their fingers, hoping they get the most out of those berries and roots and mushrooms like no they would extract it in a very particular way they would try if they could to capture the oils and reintroduce those back into um you know whatever whatever menstruum they were using or the powder afterwards i, I mean did the to the dallas way back when I mean, did they even have technology for doing this how how did they consume and use these substances do you have any idea a thousand uh, years ago or oh, whatever teas teas tinctures powders nothing you know honey honey pills I think it was like that's. I think that's the whole point of this. Is pretty simple stuff. Water extractions and honey pills. Yeah, and it's like let's not try and complicate it. And that was, you know, there's been times where sourcing this way and extracting this way, adjusting pressure, and you know, it needs to get adapted. Like DDAO isn't something you're going to find two thousand years ago um, because it was just going and foraging for these herbs in those areas. It especially started seeing itself take off as a, I guess, as an, as an institution of thinking and, and, a, and a standardization that doesn't have a mark of approval, like organic. It's something that you can sense. And when, uh, when the, when the, when the, the silk roads opened up, it was the, the hermits would come in to buy the, you know, whatever, whatever herb, the wu and go, 
no, nah, what, what is this? Where, where, where did you grow this? This isn't, this isn't, this isn't, um, this isn't Shazandra. And they'd be like, no, we've started growing it locally to make it easier because it's accessible to the hospital there, which is a very reasonable thing to do. But then they'd go, no, I want, you know, I want the, I want it from where it's like original places where you're going to get the Roma, the most robust herb. And in one of the commentaries, I take it with a grain of salt as well. One of the commentaries in, um, the, in the Ben Sao Jin copy I have, I thought I might have had it in here. I'll send that that which particular um, translation I'm talking about to you as well. It's got this story about in 400 AD, the, the warring, as you said, of thought about keeping herbs and growing them in the spe- specified place as it was specified in the Ben Sao Jin verse going and growing these herbs in orchards or in, you know, in mushrooms within this mushroom town because it's much more humid there versus growing the lion's mane right up in the north near the Korean border where it's like gnarly weather. There's, you know, there's like it's real robust lion's mane you get from there versus not so robust, but it's good enough if you grow, you know, and we can really grow it at scale here down in these more tropical areas. And and I think both are really great. And I think a lot of that is going on within the mushroom industry at the moment where there is a lot of focus on growing it fast. Yes, growing it on wood, getting an organic certification, specifying the beta glucans that were in it, you know, whether that does um, differentiate between the alpha or D beta glucans. There's a whole there's a whole thing there. Um, they're two very different ways of thinking and approaching mushrooms and herbs which is awesome that we have that, like the way I've chosen, I've really enjoyed it. It's far harder to market. Um, And I, and that was one of the interactions I've had with, especially like I had one interaction with Ron Teagarden himself. And I was like, oh, I'm really discovering how difficult it's going to be for me not to sell these herbs as organic because these are such micro farms. And yes, it's only spring water. Yes, I, we have to test them with TGA. Your FDA is nothing compared to the t- the way that the Therapeutic Goods Association has us test because we don't have a supplement category. We've only got medicine and food. 